Hi guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. My name is Jess and I'm a commercial and light industrial refrigeration and air conditioning apprentice here in Vancouver, BC. I work for my family's business, Cam Cool Refrigeration, and my dad and my brother are teaching me the trade. Today is Sunday, July 31st, and this is my weekly HVAC vlog. Oh boy, what a week. This week we were hit with a heat wave in Vancouver. This is day seven or eight in a row. And you guys, we don't deal with the heat very well here. In fact, the local government has to issue warnings every time it's over 30 or 35 degrees Celsius, because last year about seven or 800 people died during the heat wave. So now we get these warnings on our phones every morning about how hot it's going to be in the day. And I feel like it's a little bit of fear mongering, but I guess if it's saving people's lives, then <laughs> what's a little notification on your phone? Anyway, so we had lots and lots of no cooling calls this week. A lot of them were avoidable if people just keep up with their maintenance. And I'm not talking about anything crazy, although I do have a crazy story for you which I'm going to save to the end of this video, so stick around, don't change the channel. <laughs> yeah, lots of really dirty filters, lots of dirty condenser coils, got lots of use out of my jet gun this week. I love coil cleaning, so it's all good for me. Although, damn, this week was really hot on those hot, hot, hot roofs. And one of the jobs we did this week, we took both of our Subco magnetic umbrellas to one job. And then we left them in my dad's truck. So when I did my solo day on Friday, I had no umbrella, which is really stupid, but anyway. One of the cool jobs was a 12-ton portable AC on the set of some TV show. And it was really cool because our side contact was excited about showing us around a little bit. So he showed us some of the sets and there was like a cabaret set up and I don't know, like a bunch of bars and office situations. And then as we were leaving, these two like jailbird type guys dressed in the black and white stripe things, they come out, I guess they're actors, they come out for a smoke and it was just kind of funny to see those guys walking around. Anyway, so we got that up and running and yeah, that was a fun little job. My dad and my brother found and repaired two refrigerant leaks on a pretty large system for a Japanese school.
Um, oh man, it was so hot up on that roof. I had one solo day this week. It was on Friday. It was supposed to be an easy day for me. I get sent mostly on easy jobs because of my skill level and confidence. So I was supposed to change some filters and clean some coils, which I did. But then I got a, a, an emergency service call for a building that I service out in Abbotsford, which is about an hour drive away from here. Uh, they had no cooling on their unit and they've got an older carrier weather maker unit that's still an R22 system. They've actually prepared to, um, to replace it. So when they called me, they were like, I don't know, this could be like the last legs of it. Please come and see what you can do. like let us know the good news or the bad news it was a Friday afternoon I got there at 3 30 ish did my checks found out that it was a, a capacitor that was dead luckily um, but unfortunately it's a size that I didn't have in my truck and I posted a video on TikTok about it and everyone was like, oh, you should stock your truck better. But you guys, you have no idea how many sizes of capacitors there are out there. And who knows the reason for me not having it in my truck. Perhaps I just used it on my previous job. Anyway, that's a little side rant. But so I frantically called around and tried to find this specific capacitor that I needed. I went to three different places and finally the third place had one for me. They closed at 4.30. Um, so I'm like, hold it for me, I'm on my way, my GPS says 14 minutes, I'm coming. So, whip out there. Okay, we're in business. Whip back, and then as I'm coming back to my, my location, all of the streets around there, and there's a few one ways, so it's a little tricky. All of the streets are shut down, there's emergency vehicles everywhere. Look at all of those emergency vehicles, right way I have to go. They've shut it all down. The building is located right beside a, like a railway. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what happened in the 35 minutes that I was gone? What happened at the railway? So anyway, punch in my GPS again, and I follow all this like rerouting direction things. Finally make it back like 15 minutes before the office closes at five o'clock only to find out that there wasn't an emergency at all. They were filming a movie. Ah! Oh! Turns out it's not an emergency at all. It's a friggin' movie. Bloody hell, that really, really messed me up. It's fine, I made it here and I got my capacitor. Let's get this done. Anyway, so quickly scurried up to the roof, changed the capacitor and oh, it fired up. And I felt like a friggin' hero! I even like seriously did a dance on the roof. <laughs> pretty, pretty happy with myself. Yes. And now the highlight of the week. Also to do with lack of maintenance. So there's this building that we service, it's a six-story building, multi-tenanted in a commercial way. So various different offices, they've got some clinics there, dental clinics, they've even got a Service Canada office there, they've got a daycare there, fitness center, like a whole bunch of multi-tenanted suites. Oh, and in the bottom is a, a cell phone service provider. So on Tuesday, Monday night, my dad gets the call. The shaft in the blower has snapped. It's rusted completely and it is snapped. So my dad rushed out there on Monday evening because the cell phone guys, if their server room goes down, their customers are without cell phone service. So it's imperative that their server room stays up and running. So my dad rushed out there, 
got the server room up and running and how he did that was he shut down all 200 of the heat pumps in the building so that all of the cooling power that was left over they've got two cooling towers up there one of them died so all of the cooling power of the second tower there's a rhyme <laughs> um was going to the server room on tuesday morning we went in to see the scope of the damage and luckily the way that the shaft snapped it didn't cause too much damage in the other parts. So we spent the day disassembling it, removing this 10 foot, four inch hollow shaft, removing it. such a hard job but it was very exciting we ordered the new parts on a rush basis um, and on Wednesday morning they were still trying to figure out the paperwork for the shipping however by Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. all of the parts had arrived on site it's pretty amazing so we replaced the so yesterday Saturday we spent the day re installing the new shaft new bearings and one new blower wheel. They unfortunately only had one when we needed two, but luckily, like I said before, there was not a whole lot of damage, so we were able to use the old blower wheel. So we got that place up and running. The cell phone guys, they were in their server room every half an hour checking on the temperature, just checking a log. Um, it was it was crazy. It was crazy. And again, it all could have been avoided by having proper maintenance. Now their second cooling tower is identical to the first one. And that one is ju in just as bad shape as the first one. So we're hoping that it holds out until we do some um, proactive, ma not maintenance, proactive repairs. So instead of waiting for the thing to break, we're going to, when everything kind of settles down and maybe it's a bit cooler outside, we're going to replace that shaft. Um, but we'll probably keep the wheels and everything because those seem to be fine. But wow, you guys, what a, oh, what a rush, what a crazy crazy story what a crazy job to be involved with those parts are so massive today is Sunday and tomorrow is a civic holiday um, my brother and I are off to do a couple of service calls this morning in just another emergency situation just because of this heat wave and then hopefully tomorrow will be a day off that would be awesome and then it's back to it on Tuesday. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the HVAC Diaries. I feel like I've just rambled with my words. So I'm sorry if I spoke a little bit fast today. But I am. I feel like I'm just running on adrenaline this whole time. Like, summertime is 
crazy to be an HVAC tech. But I love it. I wouldn't change it for a single thing. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next week.